Good morning, everybody. We are today is Daf Nun Aleph. We left off, um, we are smack at the top of the Tunnel Rabbanon, and we're talking about this idea of Tarvid Rekha, right? This idea of the Mishnah a few days ago talked about various components of a corpse, of a mace that could be tummy to miss mace. Obviously, this is relevant to a Nazir because he has all sorts of halachas about when he um, becomes tummy mace, what he has to do about it. And now we're getting very technical with some of these various halachas about what constitutes a mace and again, how much of a mace uh, results in Tumas mace. So yesterday at the end of the daf, we, we started talking about Tarvid Rekha, but we talked about what the shear is, right? What does it mean to have a ladle full of this dust? Today, we're really going to get more into the specifics of exactly what is this, this dust. And what we're going to see is that there's really a lot of fine print. It, it sounds simple, you know, dust. But it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. And we're also going to see, and this is, is permeate the entire DAP, is there's this real hakpada. First of all, it's all a halakhal emotion in Sinai. So all of this is just, you know, there's not a lot of logic to it. But also there's a tremendous hakpada in a taruvis. It needs to be dust. Nothing else mixed in with this dust. If anything is mixed in, it will uh, result in it not constituting this tarvid record. Okay. Starting from the very, very, very top Abnun Aleph, Ahmed Aleph. Tan Rabbanan. Ezehu mace, sheyesh lo rekev. You know, what is a mace that can result in this tarvid rekev? It's a mace, shenik bar arum. It's a mace that was buried without tachrichim. But arum shal shayesh in a coffin that was marble, that again, can't decompose. Oh, al gabritz shal Or on a, a floor of bricks, again, something that can't decompose. Zehu mace, sheyesh lo rekev. This is a mace that can result in rekev. Again, because the idea being that so long as you don't have tachrichim and you're on marble, nothing can get mixed in. Those are not things that would have decomposed. And therefore, this dust is going to be fully of the mace. But nikbar b'ksuso, if a mace was buried with tachrichim or ba'aron shal eitz or in a wooden coffin, oh, al gabi ritzvah shal levenim, sorry, avon, ritzvah shal levenim, or bricks, then already, zehu mace ain lo rekev. This is a mace that won't result in rekev, again, because the things that, that the mace was buried with Will uh, will also decompose. Then it'll have some sort of mixture of the corpse dust and, and something else, and that won't be rekev. Okay, Amar Ula Ein Rekev Ela Haba Min Habasar Umin Hagidim Umin Atzamos. You're only going to have rekev if what decomposed consisted of basar of the gidim of the sinews and of the bones. You kind of need a full body. But if you only had say flesh or you only had bones or something like that, that that wouldn't work. So Ace Ve'Ravalu Ula. So Rav asked the Kasha to Ula, he said, really? I have a brisa. It says, Rekev haba min habasar tahar. It says that Rekev that comes from basar alone is tahar. But the, impl- the obvious implication is ha min etzem tame. So it's only the flesh that would be tahar. But if you had Rekev that came from the etzem, that would be tame. You told me you need all three. You need basar, you need etzem, and you need um, vidim. So it sounds like from this brisa that etzem alone would be, would be, uh, would, would be tame, would result in Rekev. So the Gemara answers, just edit the Bryce a little bit. Say, you got to have etzem babasar. But the Gemara asks, okay, I mean, that's still two or three. But you don't have a third. I thought you needed basar, gidim, and atzamos. So the Gemara answered, no, that, that's not such a kasha because e the labasar, ula atzamos, below gidim. Once you have basar and you have etzem, mm-hmm. clearly something's connecting the bus, busser and the etzem, that's your gidim, so as long as you have two of the three, we know there's also the third. Okay. Amarav Shemen, I think the gear should be Shemen, Barab Amarav Yochanan, Shnei Mesim Shekavren Zeh Zeh, Nasu Gilgalin Zeh This is already fascinating. Let's say you have two corpses that were buried, you know, whatever would have resulted in Rekav, so they, you know, they were Arum and whatever it is, but it's two of them together. Can, can that result in Rekev? And the Gemara says, no, because again, you have the term that is used here is Gilgalin. I think Toso says it, it's a little unclear what it is, but it, it means Tarovis. Uh, no, 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 no. no. It, 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 that's a different, uh, it's a different word. So it, it's, it's, for this sugya, it's meant to be like more of a Tarovis. So the point is, you have even though one mace would result in Rekev, two mace and buried together, it would not result in Rekev, because again, you'd have this Tarovis of two different maces. So Masiv Rav Nasan, he says, I don't understand. We have a Bryce that says, Rekev Habami Beis Mason Tame. 
it says clearly that if you have rectum that comes from two different mason, it's tummy. So what are you telling me that two bodies that decompose together doesn't result in, in rectum? We have a mafurish of rice and not like that. So Amar Rava, he says, no, you're mis you, you don't understand. Shakaru zebif ne'atzmo, zebif ne'atzmo, v'herkiu, v'amdu al malay tarbid rekeb. That case is talking about where you have one mace that's buried separately, another mace that's buried separately. Now they both result in rekeb. You can take that rekeb and combine. Tosa says the chiddush is that even if each mace only resulted in half of the required shear, you can combine the two halves to make a rekeb, to, to, make, to make a whole. But if you have two mason that decompose together, that wouldn't result in record. Okay, period. Amar Rabba Barbara Khana, Amar of Yochanan, Gaza's Saro, the Kivro Emo, Nasalo Galgan. What if you have a corpse and you cut off the hair of the corpse and then you bury the hair along with the corpse? Is that okay? And Gamar says, no, that also, again would create this Tarubis, right? So even though, though it's all corpse, but it's the corpse separate with his hair, that would be a Tarubis and, and you wouldn't have a, you would not have record. Tanan Haslam, kind of a similar Mishnah. This is a Mishnah, this is a Mishnah in Ahalos and Anita. So again, you kind of, you, you know where we are right now. Kol Shebemes Tame, all parts of a corpse are Tame. Futz Menashinayim Vehaser Vatipurim. All parts of a corpse are Tame, except for the fingernails, the teeth, and the hair. And this, the assumption is that it's removed, it's separate from the corpse. So if you have a corpse and the teeth are next to the corpse and you touch the teeth, maybe there wouldn't be Tuma. But if, a buran, but if a corpse, you know, if the teeth are inside the corpse, then cool and tamay. So if you walk up to a corpse and you touch the tooth, you're going you're gonna to have tamay mates. By Chizkiah. So based on these halakhas that we just learned, Chizkiah has a kashi. He says, Saro ha'omed legalech, or tipuran ha'omed legazez mai. Let's say you have a corpse and the fingernails are very long. And now it, it got buried or whatever it is, and now it turned into rekev. Is the long fingernails or the long hair, does that... Does that result in a taruvis, and therefore we wouldn't have the halacha of rekev? And he explains the kashis. Me amrinan kol ha omed li gazes ki gazes dami odilma hashta mi ha mukhubarim. So he said, normally we have a halacha that says that anything that's fit to be cut kol ha omed li gazes. So therefore, maybe you'd say if a corpse was buried and he had very long hair, right? So maybe the hair should have been cut. Had the hair been cut, it would have given us this issue of this taruvis. So therefore, even though the hair wasn't cut, maybe I have a shaila, right? Do we have rekev or do we not have rekev? Now that logic, you could say, since we're all going to die, we should all be kmei mason already. Well, how many gazes? How many lamus? It's the difference. I mean, I I didn't say it. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, well, the, trust me, the Gemara is going to we're going to have a, a bunch of shilas. Just wait till Lamed Beis. It's, it's going to get fascinating. But either way, the Gemara says, I don't even understand your question. Initially, Midrav Rachana. We just said this halacha a few lines ago, right? Rabbi Barachana's halacha was that if someone cuts the hair, then the hair is going to be a tarubis. So time on Mishum de Gazas. It sounds like it's only tarubis because the hair was cut. Hello, Gazas, lo. But if it wasn't cut, then you wouldn't have the shaila. So, so why are you asking me if hair wasn't cut, what's the halacha? I don't know. Rabbi Barachana said the halacha was clearly if the hair was cut. So, so presumably, if the hair wasn't cut, you wouldn't have the shaila. But the Gemara says, Lo, it's not such a riot from him. Because Hachikama, Gazaz, Harez the Gagalam. He was stating as a fact. If here is cut, then it creates this tarubis. But Lo Gazaz, I mean, he just didn't know. I mean, he, he wasn't asking a question. He was stating a fact. If the hair is cut, I know the Allah. If the hair isn't cut, so that's our Shiloh. So we don't actually have an answer from Rabbi Barbarakana. And we're going to leave this as a, a question that we don't have an answer to. And now we're just going to have a series of you know, very technical and interesting shilas that have to do with Rekev. So by Rabbi Yirmeh, Rabbi Yirmeh asked, Rekev haba min ha'akev, maha, what if you have Rekev, but it comes from the ankle, not the, the, the heel, sorry, the heel, not the ankle, the heel. What's the halacha? What's special about the heel? Mm -hmm. So the heel, even while someone is alive, right, there's a lot of dead skin on the heel. So the question is, what if this Rekev is coming from the heel? Mm -hmm. Does that, does that matter or not? He gamrinan, Rekev habami kulamis. Maybe this whole concept of rekev, which again we said is Allah the Moshe and I. Maybe we need a full-on corpse, right? Avol the asim and akev lo. But if we know that it came from the heel, that wouldn't constitute rekev. Oh, the maloshnar. Maybe it just doesn't make a difference. So Tashma the Gemara says we'll try to bring a raya from from one of the brises that we brought earlier in the page. The Tanya of Dasim Rebbe Yoshia rekev habami shnei mason. If you have rekev that comes from two different corpses, tame. That's tame. And again, we spoke out. 
and the answer of the Gemara that it's it's not the din isn't necessarily that it was two mason. It's one mace over here and one mace over there. So the point is, if you have rekev from a, a mace, it's tame. And what's unspoken here in the Gemara is the Gemara is saying from that halacha that rekev of and mace is tame. It's mashma that it's tame on a diaraisa level, meaning someone else who comes in, you know, in contact with the ohel, whatever it is, mm-hmm. has to deal with the uh, upper paraduma. And if you're a nazir, you got to bring your carbonos and all these mm-hmm. sorts of things. So the Gemara says, Esau could die to Chabam in a cave low. And if you're going to tell me that Rekev that comes from the heel isn't really Rekev, so Zil, Hacha Dilma Derech Akev Kaasi, Hacha Dilma Derech Kaasi, Derech Akev Kaasi. Right? And how are you telling me that Rekev from any mace is Tommy on a DRI's level? Shouldn't it always, at the very least, be a suffix that this Rekev came from the heel? Or at least part of it came from the heel, and therefore we should never say that rekev is ever tummy on a diaraisa level. We should always have a suffix. So the Gemara says, no, 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 you, you misunderstood the shaila. E the erkev kula mace. If we know we had a full on corpse, and because derech akev, and some of the rekev came from the heel, so hachanami. Then of course that's not the fact that some of the rekev came from the heel isn't going to prevent the rest of the corpse from from having this status of rekev. Elahacha, the question over here, but Yermia was asking, if Yermia was asking, was going to Irkiv Chad Aver, where for some reason we know that the decomposition happened from the leg, from a single Aver, because Derech Akev, and we also know that the heel was, you know, started to decompose. So it's we know that it's not coming from the entire body, it's coming from a very specific part of the body, of which a substantial part may have come from the heel. That's the way this bottom tosos or the last of bottom tosos seems to explain this anyway. So my is that different? Than, than, the, than the rest of the corpse. And thankfully, the Gemara says, Teiku, we can stop talking about Rekha from the heel, and we can move on. So again, it's a little unclear if you have a single limb, and, and you can think that a lot of the Rekha may have come from the heel, what exactly is the status of that Rekha? Again, Teiku. Bye, Rabirmia. Rabirmia is going to keep going. He's going to keep asking a lot of these types of questions. Uber Bemei Isha, if you have an Uber, a woman that dies while she was pregnant, and now it's years later, and we have this Rekha. Does the fetus contribute? You know, does that does, she, does the fetus become a tarubis or not? So what's the study? Maybe because we know that an uber is generally considered like a, a limb of the mother. So it's it's part of the guf. Odilma came into sofu latse since. An Uber, you know, was meant to, to like Ozzy was saying before, right? It was supposed to leave Smifrish Parish Mina. So maybe we should consider it separate. And if you're going to tell me on the side that it should be a Tarubis because the Uber turned the page because the Uber is meant to leave the body. What about What about sperm that is uh, that is in, a, in a woman? What, what, what about that? So again, we've got this pile of Rekev. So if you're wondering, right, so we'll just see the Gemara. Me, I'm reading on it's our, maybe because the sperm was never, you know, never became a fetus. So Kigubadami, it's just like her body, and therefore it's not a Tarubis. Odilma, Kevadam, Alma, Kaasi, or maybe you'll tell me since it came from, from outside of her body, right, uh, lo. So then maybe it does create a Tarubis. Now, by the way, if you're wondering, like, how in the world do we know that this woman was pregnant, we're seeing a, Pile of dust. Thirty years later, so the, so the top mafarish says don't you mesa shahisa bas banim the stam isha bas banim is the shif chazer So there's an assumption that a married woman who was of uh, of child wearing age, you know, would would have uh, shif chazer on her. Okay, but it's essentially that, that we're assuming that for toma, not for nesikim. Let's say. Yeah, I I all of this is interesting. <laughs> I, I think we can. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Fire of Papa. What about Pirsha Mahu? What about excrement? Same question, right? Since the bottom line is she needs to eat. So Khyusahi, this is just a, it's a part of her body, right? And it's not a terrorist. Oh, Dilma, or maybe the other side is Hanami Ma'alma Asi, right? It, it, it is external, and therefore maybe it should. Maybe it is external, and therefore maybe it should be a tarubis. Bayer of Achabre Drav Ika Oro Mahu. What about the what about the corpse's skin? Does the corpse's skin uh, result in a tarubis? Bayer of Hunabar Manoch. What about the corpse's saliva and the right and the mucus? So I, again, you can I think get the sense in the room, right? Everyone's like, "What are we talking about?" So Amalei Rav Shmuel Barachal Rav Papa 
He says, uh, pump the brakes, right? He's talking that call honey to come or have a goggle in. If all of these things that you're suggesting right now are a goggle in that would result in a tarubis, what is the case of Rekha, right? What are we talking about here? So the Gemara is going to say, to answer up Ozzy's, Ozzy's question, no, 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 the case of Rekha might be the Ashke made the Kalim, right? A person right before he died, he he drank this made the Kalim, right? Uh, the Rishonim speak out that it's, it's from a Gemara in Shabbos, I think. It has these features that it flushes out the whole body or uh, whatever it is. So it gets a Vesachia Nasha and he removes his hair using, you know, the equivalent of Nair back in the day. And then Vishalku made the area and they put the body, presumably after he's dead, in the native area, which takes off all the skin, this would be your case of Rekev. But again, thankfully, we stop here and we can stop talking about these various cases. Okay. Amar Abaya. This one's fascinating and presumably, not that we can possibly, you know, but presumably this has, you know, real life implications. So Amar Abaya, Naktina, we have a Masor, we have a tradition. Mace Shatakno, if you have a corpse that was uh, ground up, right? Ain't low Rekev. So then we have a corpse that now is dust, that's not Rekev. So nowadays, you know, hopefully no one's grinding up, but you have a, 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 you, have a, you have someone who gets cremated, unfortunately, right? So so you go to someone's house, there's an urn of ashes, right? Is that Rekev or is that not Rekev? According to this, it's not Rekev, right? So again, I, I don't know how we actually toss on these things, but either way, it appears to be not be Rekev. So based on that, we have a Shiloh. Tachno, the chaz of a hirkif. So I don't know how long it takes for a body to decompose, but let's say someone has an urn from a cre- from someone was cremated, and now it's fifty years later, and the body would have decomposed. So do we say that? Granted, this dust was cremated, but the bottom line, it had it been a corpse, it would have been rekev. So what do we say? Mahu midi who taima eladika basar v'dagam v'atzamos. Right, rekev is the decomposition of basar and gidim and atzamos. We have ika, and we got it all here, right? In this urn, we have something that was basar and gidim and atzamos. Odilma kibri also be none. Vileka, no, no, no. We need it as like a full body, and that we didn't have teku. So again, thankfully, we can move on. Uh, we don't, we don't have the answer. So this next, uh, from here to the end of the top, I think well, requires. Uh, it's a good question. Oh, These geez. are good questions. This is why we need Yoel and Rabbi Reese. We need the all star. I'm, I'm, I'm just on the bench. All right. Either way. Yeah. So uh, we need a little bit of context. So this next, we, uh, so the, the, the very, very, very end of the Masechta talks about uh, a case, uh, these various halachas. And a little bit of context. So what happens if you're, you know, you want to build a road, whatever it is, and you're doing a little bit of digging and you come across a body. Right. And presumably the body wasn't, it's not a graveyard, but it was in those days, I mean, people, they buried things on the side of the road, whatever it is. So you want to move it. You want to move it because you don't want there to be any tunnel and you want to build your road. So the halacha is you are allowed to move it. The assumption is it was a temporary grave. If it's a permanent grave, if you have reason to think that it was permanent, you can't necessarily remove the body. Right. We're not talking about exhuming a body in, in America to bring to Israel. We're talking about you just, you don't know much about this body and you want to move it from here to there. So if it was a permanent grave, you can't, you can't touch it. If it was temporary, you can, but you got to bring some of the earth with you. This is the idea of tfusa. If you continue to dig and you see a second body, a third body, now you got to stop. Once there's three bodies, this is what's known as a shunas kvaros, and, and you got to stop. Okay, so this, we're, we're by Tani Ula, right? Tani Ula bar Khanina. Meis shachasar, if you have a corpse that is missing a limb, is not subject to the following three halachas. Ain't no rekev, it's not subject to this law of rekev. This is obviously what we need. Float fisa, tusa, sorry. It's also not going to be subject to that halacha we just spoke out, that if you want to move a corpse, you got to bring some of the earth with it. That's only if you find a full corpse, not a corpse missing the limb. Below shkunas kvaros, it's also not subject to this third halacha of if you come across three mason, but one of them is missing a bunch of limbs, then you don't have to stop your digging. You can continue excavating until you find another mace or whatever it is. Okay, but again, the one that we need is this halacha that a body that's missing a limb is not subject to the laws of Rekha. We're going to ask on it from a Mishnah in Edius. And this is a very, very, very lengthy Mishnah in Edius. The, con- the context, again, we, it, it's worth it to spend a minute going through the context because we're going to bring Shilas from this Mishnah twice before the end of the Yomit. So the context in this Mishnah in Edius is Eber Min Hachai, of a person, of a living person. Eber Min Hachai, we actually saw this a little bit on Burim. Eber Min Hachai, 
is amputee. an amputee. Right? There's actually, a, I heard it's interesting. There's a Shila, a, a coin, once was going to have his leg amputated. You wanted to hang on to it. Um, no, no, no. This is like 100 years. Uh, he wanted to hang on to it, I think, because he wanted to like collect money or something like that. <laughs> so, so, the, so he wanted to keep he, it in the house. Right. So the, I don't think he. I don't think that was the shot. I think so he wanted the to live. Die, that 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 limb. Could Either way, the answer was he can't hang on to the limb. It was Abraham and Achai, and his coming. He has his foot. Either way, either way, the point is the point is Abraham and Achai, a full on limb. It's very clear in the Mishnais. It it conveys to Mace, and it conveys it conveys to Mas Ohel. The question is, what if you have what if you have an Abraham and Achai? And you take a kazai's basar from the Abraham and Achai, or you take a piece right. of the bone from the Abraham and Achai. When it comes to a mace, a kazai's basar clearly has a din of a, a, a tumma, and a etzem kisora clearly has tumma. What about a piece from an Abraham and Achai? Is it dafka the Abraham and Achai that has the tumma, but not the kazai's or the piece of bone, or also from from a from a from a chai? And this is a three-way machloka, Shrav Nechonia, Rabbi Yeshua, and Rabbi Eliezer, and it is an intense, lengthy Mishnah in the sixth parak of Idias. But the bottom line is Rabbi Yeshua says that he says both the kazayas of Basar and the piece of bone is not going to convey Toma. And they ask on him, and they ask him all these shilas, what do you mean we, we know from a mace? And, and the Mishnah, the Gemara here is recording his response. So mace ve, he says, lo, this is Rabbi Yeshua's response. Don't compare to me, don't bring me the case of a corpse to the Aver Minachai. Im Amrit the Mace, those halachas are all applicable to a mace, Shiyeshlo Rove, which is subject to this rule that if you have Rove of a skeleton, that can convey Toma Ba'ohel. And it's subject to the law of Rova, that even if you don't have a Rove of a skeleton, but you have a certain shear, a Rova Lug of bones, that again can be Matama Ba'ohel. Oh, Mali Tarvid Rekev, or a corpse is subject to the law of Mole Tarvid Rekev, Tomer Bachai, you're going to say that by uh, Avram and Achai, She'ain lo, lo rov, below rova, below Mole Tarvid Rekev. So the Gemara is basically saying, how, how are we to understand Rabbi Shua's response? Rabbi Shua's response to these Tanoim was basically to say, don't compare corpse to me, because Avram and Achai isn't subject to this Rekev halacha, and a corpse is. So Hechidami, he, what he must be saying is the Irkiv Chad Aver, when this Avram and Achai decomposes, it's not subject to the law of Rekev. And De Kavase, to complete the analogy to a mace, it must be De Kavase Gabi Mace, a Filu Chad Aver. Even one Aver would be subject to this halacha of Pika Rekev, right? So again, the, 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 the halacha that we said was if you have a corpse that's missing even one limb, it's not subject to Rekev. The Gemara is asking now from Rabbi Yeshua's response that Mishnah um, it is, it must be, no, if Rabbi Yeshua is saying that even one limb of a corpse is subject to Rekev, so clearly a full body missing Jeez. a limb is going to be subject to Rekev. So how could you tell me your halakha that a full corpse minus a limb is not subject to Rekev? Mm. Yes? Okay, sure. But the Gemara answers, don't read that Mishnah in Idias so, so, so carefully. I mean, let's not parse these words, right? Mik, Tani, Ha, May, he's not really comparing one limb to one limb. He's just saying more of the concept. Hakamash Mulan, he's just saying, Shum, Mace, meaning don't bring Uriahs from the concept of a corpse to the concept of Abram and Achai. Because in the concept of a, a corpse, right, Yeshlo, Rekev, right, corpses have the halacha of a Rekev. Maybe not one limb, but the, a corpse has the halacha of a Rekev. But Shum Chai, when you're dealing with Abram and Achai or living people in general, ain't the Rekev. It's, they, they don't have this concept of a Rekev. And that's all Rabbi Shul was trying to say. He wasn't trying to get as specific comparing one limb to one limb. It's just the concept of a corpse to the concept of a uh, Chai. Okay. Bai Rava. Hirkev Kishuhu Chai. Mahu. So what if, you know, Lovalenu, if you walk into like a, an old age home or something, sometimes you see people that it looks like their flesh is, is almost like decaying even while they're alive. Right, so what if you have a person whose flesh is decaying while they're alive? So it's the decomposition process started while they're alive, umes, and now they're dead, and now their body decomposes. How do we treat that? We know there's obviously a very hakpada on taruvis. How do we treat this? Higamiri, when we have the halacha lemosh we see, and I have rekev. It's the irk of kashu It's stafka where the whole process started when the corpse was a corpse, when it was dead. Odilma hashta miyahamais, or you say no, maybe even if it started while he was alive, that's fine. So long as now he's dead. 
That's the question. So Tashma, we're going to bring a raya from this exact same Mishnah in idiots. Lo im amrat b'meis sheish lo ro berova umale tarvet rekav. All these tanaim were asking Rabbi Shua, and he responded, and he said, "Don't bring me comparisons from a corpse because corpse has all these special halachas of ro and rova and umale tarvet rekav." Tomar b'chai. But again, it sounds like what they're basically saying is a dead person has all these halachas. A dead, even if it started when he was alive, the, the emphasis is a dead person. So that should answer up Rabbi Shaila. But the Gemara, again, give a very similar tariff. The Gemara said, don't, again, don't be so literal. You know, sorry, the question, time on Mishum Chai, Hamez, Yesh Lorekev. But the Gemara says the same answer. It says, Miktani, Hamez, Hakamash Malan, the Shum Mez, Yesh Lorekev. Our Rishu is basically saying this. Don't compare halachas that apply to corpses to halachas that apply to Abram and Achai. Because again, you know, Shum Mez, Yesh Lorekev, corpses have this idea of Rekev and Shum Chai. Ain low rekev, and and we can we can go to the two dots another few minutes, or we can stop here. I hear a lot of major pieces really fast. Yeah, I gotta go. Decompose you from who <laughs> <laughs> died, and then after you go compared to a red bird, what person that dies. So that's exactly that's the exact question. I mean, that, that, so it sounds like should we just uh, should we just go to the two dots, guys? Yeah, yeah, let's go to the two dots. But you're rubbing new new, new Shila entirely, right? Whenever it comes to my chalos, the two rows, you know, there's always a shear. A shear is a kizayis, but Sometimes, if you eat a full barrier, a full creature, an ant, yeah. there's also going to be an isra, even though an ant is in the kazais, but as long as it's a full uh, uh, shear, a full barrier. creature, a full barrier, that also has the same status. So, by Rabba, Nimala, Shechasra, while we're on, the con- while we're on this thing of missing limbs, what if you have an ant that's missing a leg? Mahu, Shiura Gamiri Lava, Chasr, Oberia Gamiri Lava, Ika. Do we view, do we say that the shear of an ant is a full ant, and if it's missing a leg, it's missing the shear? Or do you say, no, it's a creature, and an ant without a leg, it's a creature, it's an ant without a leg. So if you eat an ant without a leg, are you over the, the, the itzer, or are you not over the itzer? That's the shayla. So Amr Rabbi Yehuda Midiskarta, Tashma, let's just go through these, suck him a little bit, this is all in the concept of shratzim. Ela tameim lachem b'chol ha-sharetz, kol Bahem, whoever touches them, Bahem, it sounds like it's a touch the entire part. The very next pasuk, the Khalashari Pola love mayhem. If you touch a part of them. So there's this there's this contradiction within the Pasuk, and there's this tension. Do you have to touch Bahem or only Mayhem? So the Bri says, Tashma, Bahem, Yahabakul, and the Pasuk says Bahem, you would think I have to touch the entire Sharetz. Amalomar, mayhem. The very next passage says, no, mayhem, you only have to touch a part of them. E, mayhem. Yochem, it's Amalomar, bahem. You have to touch the entire thing. So again, there's this inherent uh, tension. Do you have to touch mayhem or bahem? Ha, Kesa, how does this work? Ah, she, yagia, bimiktsasan. You have to touch a part of them. Shahu, kekulam. But this part of them constitutes the entire thing. What does this mean? Mishiru, chachamim, bika'adasha. And they said, you have to touch. How, how much of a sharas you have to touch? The size of a lentil, rather small shear. Where do they come up with a lentil? Shekane, hachomet, chilas priyaso, kadasha. A chomet, which is one of the shratzim, snail, a lizard, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, when it's born, it's the absolute smallest it can possibly be, is the size of a lentil. But the Gemara sees from here, shmamina, shiurukamir, that sounds like that tiny size is a shear. Because it sounds like what we're saying is, well, how do I know the shear is Dasha? Because that's the absolute smallest that this thing can be. But why don't we say that even though the, the absolute smallest it could be is a lentil, but can't this chomet be missing a leg? Then it would be even smaller than Adasha. It sounds like the absolute minimum is Adasha. So to answer our Shaila from Rava, we would say that an ant should be the shear. And if it's missing a leg, it's missing the shear. That, that would seem to be the answer from this brysa. But Amarav, Shame, Rav Shame says, I, I, don't, I don't hear your answer. Because he says, he be in and she ura. Maybe it's different in the case of the chomet. Dibidlo, havia ka'adasha, lo metama, dlo nafla banishama. We're talking about a chomet that is just born, that is the absolute smallest it could possibly be. Um, and maybe what I'll tell you is, avol nafla banishama, lo tabarlach. Maybe what I'll tell you is, this chomet, if it was missing a leg, it wouldn't survive. Meaning, it, the second it's born and it's in the smallest state, it needs every single one of its limbs. And therefore, that is the shear when it comes to a chomet. But an ant, an ant doesn't have a leg, it can still live. Mm-hmm. It can still live. So maybe I'll tell you, the answer is different when it comes to an ant missing a leg 
Therefore, you can't bring a raya from this uh, from this brisa. And the bottom line is, this entire daf we had a lot of very interesting questions. It doesn't seem like we had a lot of answers, a lot, a lot of questions. Uh, oh, don't gosh, actually. Oh, don't